Some of us knew that there wasn't in any evidence or certainly enough evidence of weapons of mass destruction before the Iraq war. That would be me, for example. But others claim that it was, quote, a slam dunk. One of the most questionable sources of information on Iraq was a guy that was so shady they called him Curveball. He was an Iraqi defector who told investigators that Saddam Hussein had secret biological weapons program. And guess what? He's now finally admitted he made it all up. Here's what Curveball told The Guardian, quote, he gave me this chance. I'm sorry, they gave me this chance. I had the chance to fabricate something to topple Saddam's regime. Curveball originally told the story to German intelligence officials well before the Iraq war started. And they knew he was full of it, and they didn't care what he said or what he had to say until someone in Washington wanted information, bogus or not. Now listen to what Curveball says about that. Quote, the German intelligence knew in 2000 that I was lying after they talked to my former boss, Dr. Basile Latif, who told them there were no mobile weapons factories, bioweapons factories. Then in, all of a sudden, in the run-up to the 2003 invasion, they came back to me and started asking for more details about what I had told them. I still don't know why they then passed on my information to the CIA and it ended up in Powell's speech. Ooh, 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 I know, I know. It's because they needed manufactured evidence right before the war. That wasn't hard to figure out. Now here's Powell in 2003, explaining how the U.S. knew Saddam Hussein had mobile production facility that made biological agents. The source was an eyewitness, an Iraqi chemical engineer who supervised one of these facilities. He actually was present during biological agent production runs. Oops, that would be Curveball. Now here's what Powell said this week after Curveball's admission, quote, the question should be put to the CIA and the Defense Intelligence Agency as to why this wasn't known before the false information was put into the NIE, sent to Congress, the President's State of the Union address, and my February 5th presentation to the UN. Now that's a great question. An even better question is, who knew Curveball was lying and who didn't? To help me answer that important question, we're going to talk to a man who was there, retired Army Colonel Larry Wilkerson. He served as the Chief of Staff to the Secretary of State Colin Powell. Colonel Wilkerson, I want to start with this. I, look, everybody wants to know. Did Colin Powell know or did he not know when he made that presentation that there was questionable evidence in there? I live cheek and jowl with George Tenet, the director of Central Intelligence, and his intelligence deputy, John McLaughlin, for five days and five nights. I never heard a single word of doubt expressed about what we were told were four separate sources independently corroborating one another that proved the existence of mobile biological labs, one of which was an Iraqi chemical engineer who had actually worked in the labs and had seen an accident occur that killed some 12 people, confirming that the ingredients in the labs were lethal. That's all we were told. And what I've found, about, found out since, much of what you've just reiterated, makes me very angry. So that leads to the question of, do you think you were flat out lied to? I cannot come to any other conclusion, especially when I have discovered that no U.S. personnel were present when Curveball was interrogated by the BND, the German Intelligence Service, that we accepted that, that we even had a, a, a head of European division for the CIA, Tyler Drumheller, who at the last minute during Powell's preparation, during my preparation of the secretary, had told both Tenet and McLaughlin that Curveball might not be reliable. That information was never relayed to the Secretary of State or to me. I have some serious doubts about it now. I think there was some manipulation of this, uh, this material and there was some outright lying. So who do you think lied to you? That's an interesting question. We also had two of the very uh, most in integral to this intelligence picture people from WINPAC, from CIA's bowels, if you will, who knew all about weapons of mass destruction, not just in Iraq, but elsewhere. We had two of those people with us. I've since learned that one of those people may have been uh, talking directly to the vice president's office, to Dick Cheney's office. So he was working for two masters. Uh, these people were very convincing. They were, after all, the experts. They were, after all, the people whom Dr. Rice and Rich Armitage and Colin Powell and others uh, pestered to get the right answers out of it, meeting after meeting after meeting at Langley. And these people gave the information, some of which you've reiterated here tonight. So who was lying? 
who was lying in this whole process or who was caught up in a, a colossal groupthink. There's got to be some duplicity, though. There's got to be some uh, not telling of the complete truth there because the Secretary of State was not told the complete truth, and this was one of the instances where he was not. Do you think the Vice President's office manipulated you and Secretary Powell into Absolutely. giving a speech? Absolutely. And, and knowing that Colin Powell had the credibility, knowing that Colin Powell was the most resistant to the war inside the administration, if he makes a case for them, they, they gain that credibility, and then they set a Powell up to take the fall. You think that's before, what happened? Before I went to Langley, I got my team together, and one of the things we talked about was Adlai Stevenson's speech at the U.N. during the Cuban Missile Crisis. One of my team said, well, why is Powell doing this? Adlai Stevenson was the U.S. Uh, ambassador to the U.N. Why isn't he doing that? And I looked at him and I said, you asked me that question? The only member of this administration with any credibility is Colin Powell. He's got poll ratings like Mother Teresa. They're using him. Wow. One last question for you. Knowing what you know now about curveball and other evidence, would you have uh, said we should not go to war in Iraq? That's a different question altogether. Uh, I, I will say this. I believe had curveball not even existed, had we not had the intelligence picture we had, we still would have gone to war with Iraq because George W. Bush and Dick Cheney were absolutely intent to do so. Colonel Wilkerson, we thank you very much for your honesty tonight, and we appreciate you joining us. Thanks for having me.